Okay, so we're back with another question from a member. Uh, this member is Michael, and also a huge shout out to Michael. Uh, we just had an interview that we that I recorded. I'll leave a link on this page if you guys want to check it out. Uh, currently, I have it on the homepage as well. So if you come to the homepage, you guys can uh, watch the interview. Uh, and if you guys are not a member yet, you guys can get started learning FL Studio with me right here, okay? Okay, so let's get into Michael's question. So I actually just did a huge test inside of FL Studio trying to figure out how does the signal flow work. And when I go into FL Studio, I'll show you it. Uh, it was kind of confusing, but in the end of the day, I think I figured it out. So Michael's question is, hey, what's up? Loving the new site layout. I have a question on volume usage. So when making a beat and you create a pattern in amongst the others, what volume control do you recommend if a melody or drum is too high? Do you adjust on the channel rack or go straight to the mixer? I've seen both used. Okay, so what Michael is asking here is when you are making your beat, okay, um, should you be should you be adjusting volume in the channel rack, for example, with this volume knob, or should you be adjusting it in the mixer? Now, I was actually trying to figure out that if you turn this volume up and down, uh, does it control the volume coming into the very, very beginning of the mixer? Okay, so for example, I will uh, hit F6 here to hide the channel rack. When your audio comes in, imagine it's coming right, um, right here at the top of first. Okay, so the audio comes in now, this is important to understand because this is how your volume, and this is what's called gain staging, okay? So when you go from one plug into the next, gain staging. Many times if they're analog emulations, so what that means is let's say old vintage gear, which people used to love the sound of, they make it into a software, okay? Such as like, you know, a VST, and it can emulate that same compressor sound, that same EQ sound. So if you have an emulation plugin, which these Pro Q3s are not, um, but if you send too much gain into it, it can distort. Whereas these plugins, they will not distort, you know, if you're driving, um, you know, lots of gain into them. Okay. So what Michael is asking, should we be controlling volume here? Should we, should we be controlling volume in the mixer? Or even if you go and to the piano roll, should you be adjusting volume right here? Okay. So FL studio gives us tons of options, um, to control volume. Okay. And let me just talk about the test I did here. Okay. I'm going to go through this super quickly um, because I'm pretty sure I figured it out. I, um, hopefully I didn't have any kind of uh, mistakes, but so how it's working is this kick drum is routed to insert nine. So what I figured out is this volume is actually at the top of the insert. Okay. So again, if I uh, disable this or bring this, um, push away the channel rack. So the audio comes right into the top from this volume knob. Okay. And my test was when the audio came in, which is first, so I'll just press Q. Okay. Uh, so that's my audio. Now, when I increase this volume, uh, it was going to be going into the distortion. So we can hear like lots and lots of crunch. However, if I use this volume knob to bring back the volume, okay, now we are not driving into the distortion as hard. Then on the second plugin, I can now boost the volume back to what I just turned down here. Okay. So what that's doing is it's actually turning down the volume. So it's not distorting, then I'm bringing it back up. Okay. And through that test, it's like, yes. Yeah, so what's happening is this audio is at the very, very beginning. Okay. And then this a slider is at the end of your plugins. So by keeping that in the back of your mind, you'll know that if you want to drive more signal into the insert, you can just come from here. So imagine you had a sound that you liked when it went through all your effects here. Okay. You're happy with it, but it's just too loud. Then you can just turn down the volume. Okay. However, if you find that, you know, um, maybe you want to pull back on your effects a little bit. Okay. So instead of coming into every single insert, and adjusting each plugin's volume, you can actually come here and you can just pull back on the volume a little bit. And it just, it, it's actually, for, again, from the very, very top, it's just reducing that signal a bit. So it's kind of uh, lessening uh, your effects, okay? So now let's get into how I work uh, when it comes to um, all this stuff, okay? So I'm gonna hit F6 and put this back up top and perfect. Okay, so when I make a beat, my mindset is I'm always trying to send everything into the mixer to 
mix my music. So for example, every single sound would get its own mixer insert. And now you can adjust the volumes from here. Okay. This is the easiest way to keep track. And even for panning, you know, it's just nice and visual. So if I'm making a drum loop and let's just route this to insert seven because insert nine and stuff like that was all my effects and it could be too loud. So let's just listen. Okay, good. Let's just bring the volume back up. So let me just listen to the drum loop with you. So imagine this drum right here was too loud. You know, I would probably just turn it down just a little bit. Okay. And my whole mindset there is I'm just trying to get a nice balance of a drum loop. And then I will send all of these to the mixer. Okay. And you can do that with, uh, I've highlighted all those and you're going to hold down control, uh, shift and L boom. Okay. And as you can see, it just wrote it. And that's why I always talk about color coding and stuff. And for all the members that know all that stuff, like, you know, it saves you a lot of steps there. Okay. Now the next way to adjust any of these sounds. Okay. So imagine you had your drum loop going on. And now in this case, this is actually a good example. So right here, uh, that drum's hitting so hard and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but, but that's because I routed everything, right? So I'm just going to bring all this stuff back. This is a good example. If this sound is too loud. Okay. And if we turn on the volume, well, it's going to turn down all of them. And let's say maybe it was just this one where these you know, um, where this is called layering. Okay. And sometimes, you know, the problem with layering is sometimes when you layer sounds, uh, it could be too loud. And so to adjust volume for that stuff, you just go to the piano roll. So right click piano roll, and you can adjust your velocity. So if I hold down control, right click, zoom into that. Now you can just adjust, you know, stuff like this. So in this case, um, this is, this was the one, let's say that was the problem because that's the layer, just turn it down. And then when you play your loop, this sound only is, is turning down in volume. You, you guys can also come up to here and adjust that velocity as well. As you can see, I'm highlighted on velocity and stuff like that. Um, so this up here is the same thing as the piano roll. I usually like to work in the piano roll because like, you can, you can kind of see it, but this works nice and quick as well too. Okay. So just to recap on Michael's question. Okay. So. When it comes to controlling volume for your sounds, I just revealed to you, you know, how it works because I just learned this as well too, okay? So this controls how much volume is going into your actual insert, okay? So now let's say you had a whole bunch of plugins and you just feel that you're pushing it too hard, okay? Maybe it's sounding too squashed. You can actually just come up here and turn down the volume and it's actually sending less gain into the top of your slots, okay? And then again, if you adjust the volume here, it's after all the effects. So again, imagine you have all these effects on, you like the sound the way it is, you just need to turn down the volume while well, you're going to be using uh, like the slider to turn it down. Now, again, for workflow, I typically do like to send all of my individual sounds to their own insert. That way I have full control over, you know, volume panning and stuff like that. If you choose to use the volume up here, I usually do it as kind of like a quick and dirty. Uh, again, when we listen to the drum loop, you know, imagine it was just kind of like this sound only plays once, you know, instead of right clicking, going to the piano roll, turning on the volume. Well, it's like that took like what, three clicks, whereas you know, one click, you know, uh, now in this case, like I said, with this example, we have four sounds. Well, I'm not going to turn down this volume if, you know, cause sometimes when I hit, if I were to hit play, you know, imagine this just hit really loud because it's layered. Whereas these ones do not have a layer. So again, I would actually go to the piano roll for that one and reduce it. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and yeah, so if you guys are not a member, just visit this link right here. This is not live yet. Um, it works. I just got to record the video. So uh, again, members, the reason why I'm showing you this stuff is just because I'm working on the business stuff in the back end. Uh, I'm getting there. I have um, an idea um, for um, the number pad course. I also have an idea for another course and I'm just kind of getting those prepared in the back end. I'm actually going to be releasing those courses uh, before this beginning to end um, walkthrough and I'll reveal to you why I'm doing that. But again, I'll talk to you guys uh, through that through email. So again, here's the question and you, you guys members. So just, you know, click questions or you guys can even ask a question just right here. And if you're logged in, you'll be able to ask a question. Okay. So Michael, thank you so much. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, the beginning was a little tricky to, to understand, but 
um, you know, go through, watch it over, really listen, and then you can even test it out for yourself. Um, but that is how I would approach volume inside of FL Studio when it comes to my individual sounds um, and sending it to the mixer and stuff like that. <laughs>